Good morning, everyone. Today could either go really, really bad or really, really good. So I'm mainly two airplanes today, both of them from Dynam. One is the Gloucester Meteor, which I just got in. I'm really, really excited to fly. And the other is the P-51D version two Mustang. So stay tuned. Well, okay guys, uh, before we get to the Maiden, I just wanted to go over the Gloucester Meteor uh, from Dynam. Uh, before we get it up in the air, I this is obviously filmed after the Maiden, so it was successful and I uh, had a couple nice landings. I actually flew after that Maiden flight, uh, another flight, a um, little bit more spirited flying. I did some rolls and everything, and the thing flies really good. I, it, just looking at the thing, it's kind of surprising that the thing flies at all because it has these really short stubby wings and it's got a long fuselage. Going on uh, to basically the airplane, I believe that uh, Dynam is the only manufacturer out there that actually makes a uh, Gloucester Meteor. So um, good on them for doing this. Uh, it's got some, some quirks and, and some really interesting um, scale details to it. So I'm just gonna go over that real quickly with you guys right now. First off guys, just some specs. These are 70 millimeter EDFs in each wing, so twin EDFs. That's made to fly on 4S rather than like a 6S so because of the KV of the motor. Now I probably am in the future going to switch the KV of the motor from a 2600 KV motor down to like an 18 or 1600 KV, just so it will take 6S just fine. And the ADM ESCs in here are rated for 6S as well. So I'm ready to go there. So I'm just gonna swap out both the motors and I uh, should be ready to go for 6S. Now the maiden flight was done on 6S because I've read a few people that have done it. Um, I think you're gonna be pushing the motors a little bit on there, but I was just very uh, thoughtful about my throttle that I didn't go full throttle on my maiden flight. Now one of the things about having a twin motor airplane is that there's a lot of wires go that go into each side. There's flaps, there's lights, there's uh, ailerons. There's a lot of wiring going on. And luckily with this model, everything is actually already wired for you and, and ready in the uh, the battery bay here to be hooked up to your receiver. So it's just kind of plug and go. Um, I'm running a lemon receiver in this model um, and I'm in the process of, process of actually moving that lemon receiver around because I want to run a bigger battery so I'm going to actually uh, cut back some of the foam so I can scoot that battery back. Now the overall construction of the airplane is, is pretty good. The foam is good quality. The scale detail is pretty amazing. Biggest complaint that I've seen about this airplane is the way that the wing tips are attached to the fuselage. It's tough because you have a big um, EDF right here and there's not a whole lot of uh, sparring that you can have for these wingtips and they are slightly loose. Now I am planning to actually run a spar all the way through the EDF in front of the motor here. I'll just have one uh, spar going in front of that. That should stiffen up this wing just fine. The wing tips are not under a lot of stress with this airplane while you're flying it. It's kind of made to be flown fairly scale, so I'm not too worried a bit about it at this time. You can always put some blender and tape around the, the ends of the wings there, and it would actually help firm things up quite a bit. So guys, let's talk about the decals or the decals if you're in Canada or if you're French. Um, so this was a throwback to the past. Now these are actually not stickers. These are actually water transfer uh, decals. So. Um, I haven't done this since I was 12 years old and uh, putting them on my uh, model cars uh, when I was a kid. So um, during the maiden flight, I did have one of my decals or my decals fly off. So luckily we recovered it and we're gonna put that back on. I'm probably gonna put uh, a little bit of the Minwax um, uh, surface protectant there to help those stay in place in the future. Okay guys, uh, one of the things you gotta watch out for when you first get this airplane is that the split elevator is attached together by a long rod that helps to um, flex the elevator up and down. You definitely want to remove the uh, clevis horn here and actually really exercise the, the control surface so that it's not quite so stiff. If you don't do that, uh, you'll only get one side going up and down. I flexed it back and forth quite a bit. I actually like, helped to tear the foam a little bit and it really freed up the elevator to give me the, um, the movement that I wanted. Now the elevator actually goes up and down right side and left side, pretty darn close to um, EVO. So like I was saying, if this thing's pretty much ready to fly out of the box, you just plug in your receiver and you go. Um, your EDFs are access down here. Your landing gear uh, pops out from here. I have a landing gear door that got hung up on the grass, so I got it ripped off, so I need to glue that back into place. Other than that, guys, it is a stunning World War II replica. I highly recommend it. It's, it's pretty neat airplane. You won't see too many of these 
out of your regular flying field. So in the future, I'm gonna stiffen up the wingtips. I'm going to lower the KV of the motor and uh, run this on 6S uh, on a regular basis. Uh, it can be run on 4S out of the box, but um, other than that, let's get to the Maiden. Hey. <clears throat> Very smooth. What's beeping? You gonna do a little pass soon? Uh, sure, I'll do, more. I'll do what I can do here. Don't mind a lot of drama with that one. Yeah. That is a very sexy plane, Captain Jeff. Probably should land it. Yeah. Well, this plane very low throttle. So. I'm gonna land. Yeah, yeah, land. Uh, the, where is there? Measure, measure. See how much left. Nice, nice, nice lady. Oh, thank you. <laughs>